Dr. Derek Summerfield is a psychiatrist and honorary senior clinical lecturer at the Institute of Psychiatry, Psychology and Neuroscience at King's College, London. He has a very extensive background in researching, publishing and practice in the area of treatment of torture and refugees. He's also undertaking to be an independent medical observer at the Assange hearing. So at some stage, he should be able to give us some first-hand observations of what was actually happening in the court. My name is Eric Summerfield. I'm a, uh, a doctor in London and a psychiatrist and someone who's been involved with matters of this kind for some years. Let me just say, as a sort of Western citizen, this man, Assange, has been a revealer of truths. We all have to see this, not as specialists, but as, as citizens, yeah? This guy has brought to light what Western democratic governments have been doing in our name. They've been spying on us and lying to us, yes? So this, I would say, before I start, is what a cutting-edge citizen should be in the 20th century. This man, this sort of thing, yeah? So I'm speaking in that moment as a citizen, but in another level, I'm speaking as a specialist. I was for a decade principal psychiatrist at the Medical Foundation for Victims of Torture in London. So I've been involved in this sort of territory for a while. What alarms me is that here's the UN reporter, Niels Melson. Now, I've had involvement with US reporters on torture in the past, previous ones, who have been extremely cautious about taking up anything, very, very cautious about the complexities of things. And Neil Melson's words about Assange have seemed to have struck right through that, really. It's been quite, quite difficult talking about, you know, a downward spiral. He wanted the British government to retract authorization for his extradition, etc. Talked about what seemed to be to him deliberate exposure to psychologically traumatizing aspects over many years. After you think about it, he's been more or less solitary confined for many years. And indeed, talking about the cumulative effects. And indeed, Neil Melser used the term psychological torture. Now, that's pretty unusual in UN rapporteurs, I'll tell you. You know, they are much more cautious than that. I'm very struck by that. It is interesting that the evidence is that he, in many ways, has been in variable mental states, which beg questions about his capacity to conduct his defense with his solicitors and his lawyers, for one thing. The response by the UK government and indeed the Australian government to these things by, uh, there was a, a petition by 60 doctors, has received no response whatsoever. The question that's arisen indeed from Neil Mouser's stuff is, is this man a sort of broken person who could die in prison? And it would seem to me that he, on the evidence available on the face of it, that he needs assessment out of Belmarsh prison in some other place, physical and, and certainly a psychiatric assessment to see what's going on with this man. In relation to that, I and another doctor are going to the Westminster Magistrates Court where the next stage of his hearings takes place. Of course, the big hearing is in February when there's a substantive hearing about his extradition case. But I'll at least have the chance to see him on video link. He won't be present, we understand. And for me, the question is how much he is in a position to be fully in possession of his senses at this crucial time, which may determine processes that lead him to being never a free man ever again. Yeah. And we understand his lawyers have only had two hours with him in the last month, which seems uh, an extraordinary thing, an extraordinary thing, and makes you wonder about, you know, just what the stakes are for the British government in a case like this. I was struck just to finish by Meltzer's remark that in 20 years of involvement in these matters, he'd never seen a group of democratic states landing on one individual in quite this way. And I think that's some evidence of what is at stake for the various parties and what's at stake for us. So there does seem a well-founded case to look at him medically at this point in the procedure, given the extraordinary circumstances he's been living through since uh, six, seven years, and more recently, and now being held solely in a Belmar prison in relation to extradition and for no other reason, which seems to me at the human rights level pretty grotesque. So we, uh, on the medical side, will see what we can make of him on the evidence that's allowed to us. But our best contention is that he should be pulled out of there and assessed properly somewhere else in a proper centre. Thank you.
I'll get some idea anyway.